Alright folks, what is up? This is One Big Bug and I'm coming at you again with Euro Truck Simulator 2 Picking your first truck and in this one we are going to be looking over the man truck Yes, every time I think of this truck I think of like Mack truck, you know, just the name of it, man truck You want to be a man, you drive a man's truck, here you go <laughs> But, uh, <clears throat> yes, the man truck comes in a lovely mannish yellow color um, there's a lot of good things about this truck. Um, I'm not overly familiar with it, but we are going to be familiar with it, uh, very, very shortly. So this is it right here, the Man TGX XL. 4x2, XL cabin, left-handed, uh, steering wheel, obviously. 320 horsepower. Now, again... That's much like the Iveco and the Mercedes. It's actually a very low horsepower engine. But take a look at its Newton meters. 1,600 Newton meters at 1,000 RPM. Right? 1,600 Newton meters at 1,000 RPM. That's a lot of pulling power. Okay? That's a lot of pulling power for uh, a low horsepower engine. So man kind of does the same thing as Mercedes. <laughs> this is also a ZFAS Tronic in, uh, transmission gearbox, and it has an 800 liter tank with a supplemented 450 liter tank. It's $101,520. Now, what's so good about the man truck? Well, <laughs> it's probably one of the most stable trucks in the game, even from starting out. It's just a big, wide, burly truck. It sits there on the road and goes, I'm not letting go. Boom, that's it. <clears throat> it's incredibly stable. It has really good pulling power at low RPM, at you know, starting up at a thousand RPM, and it actually looks really good too. It's got a nice look to it. So it's an overall very solid buy truck. And even in its upgraded series, I think we're looking here the XXL, um, you know, 680 horsepower engine that you can upgrade to. Uh, that's <laughs> pretty damn significant. Alright, so with that being said, let us see if we can find a reasonable uh, freight to pull. Uh, 18 tons, it's going the wrong direction though. I'd rather not if I can help it. 17 tons, no, 19 tons, 456 kilometers, that's perfect. There we go right there, we're going to pull these bobcats, 19 tons. Beautiful, beautiful choice. So we're going to set the GPS right there. I think on the Mercedes we hauled, what, 20 tons? Was it 20? 22? 20? Something like that. 20 tons. Ooh, I've got my earphones up a little too high so here we take a look at the truck again it's I don't have it in high res and I apologize for that so you're not going to see it in all its glory but you know it is what it is you see the big square tank there the smaller tank on the other side and just take a look you know it's just a big wide burly truck like I said it's just really impressive and it has a very standard uh, gray on black interior uh, on it um, you know, nothing too impressive on the inside. Not as colorful as the Renault. Um, low roof, obviously, to start. And, uh, you can hear it's got a nice sound to it. It's got, it's just got that nice truck sound to it. Yeah, let, let's not back into the fence this time. That would be preferable. Oh, I don't have my GPS up. <laughs> I'm like, why is my GPS not working? Oh, that's right, I turned it off earlier because I was looking over a few things. Well, that was annoying. But I think what I'm going to do, uh, as I mentioned before, I'm pretty sure I'm going to look to get a refurbished uh, GTX 570 card. And that'll hopefully allow me, with an expanded memory that I'm going to get at the beginning of this month, be able to record this. And they're actually coming out with American Truck Simulator, as probably most of you have seen if you're in the Truck Sim Reddit. Um, 
as well. So hopefully that will allow me to run, run them on higher graphics and be able to record without too much slowdown. That's really what I'm looking forward to doing. There's just a couple things i got to check out on my computer. I really don't want to replace my power supply, but I will if I have to. Because I don't think I need to go all out and buy a new computer yet. I was thinking about doing that. I don't think I need to. I think I can just upgrade a couple pieces in it and still be set for at least another year. So it drives really well when it's empty. You know, when you run in Bobtail, runs really, really well, as you've seen there. That low torque allowing you to just get up to speed really easily. Volvo. So this de definitely does start off in a different area. We're not, not run, making a run to the airport. I think it's pretty cool that we're going to a farm area and picking up some bobcats. I think that's really, really cool. But everything about the man truck does fit its persona per se. It's got a nice deep directional sound to it, that low, slow, deep, tick, tick directional. It's got a nice, uh, horn's not too bad, I mean, obviously, uh, horn mods are one of the bigger things in the game. And, um, you know, it's got a nice engine sound to it, nice deep engine sound, so everything about the man truck really does fit that big burly, um, there we go, nice back, and actually backed in a little too far, but it's okay, and it has really nice visibility, there's no bar on the window for extra blockage, yes, the mirror does block the significant area, but that slot through uh, the mirror there and the windshield, actually makes a difference. And that really does make a difference in terms of visibility. You get a nice big side window for looking out of. Oh, and he's going to let me go. That's really cool. Nice big windshield, tall windshield, and actually long windshield to see out of. Your front view mirror is out of the way, off to the side, which is really nice. It gives you a beautiful up front, unobstructed view, unlike a couple of the other trucks we've done recently, like the Mercedes, and in all due honesty, the Renault. And the mirrors themselves, you know, look at that big mirror right there, that top mirror, that big mirror, then the nice fisheye uh, down bottom. I prefer the fisheye up top, but the fisheye down bottom is just fine. And so that mirror is uh, really nice down there uh, in terms of um, in terms of a truck. So really, there there there's almost nothing I can complain about on this truck. This, this is another truck I easily, if I had bought it first, uh, over. Why are you stopping? We have a green light. There's no reason to stop. Had I bought this first. Over the um, Scania, I've probably been driving man, you know, just like I have that, that, that secret love for Renault trucks, you know, the Renault Magnum at least, not so much the Renault Premium, although the Renault Premium is a good truck, don't get me wrong. My review on it says it's, one, it's probably the first solid truck that they're, the only thing I can truly complain about on it is the non-upgradable chassis. You know, you're stuck with uh, 2x4, maybe 4x4. I don't know about the Magnum yet. We'll get into that later. So we're going to actually hit this pretty slow. Uh, we hit it about 38. And so we're going to get down pretty low in, in the speed. So I'm not going to call this the best judge of getting up on the ramp here, which is fine. We'll, we'll build up on another ramp somewhere and see how it does, like I, like I normally do. Hit it at about 60 and then come out at the top to see how fast we're going. You can tell just by looking to the side. It's just a wide truck. Um, much wider than actually the Renault uh, or, the, um, or the Mercedes. And you would say, oh, no, it's not. Well, yeah, actually it is. It's quite a, a, a wide truck, which is 
that plus a longer chassis gives it a fairly strong uh, stable base to start with which is the really cool thing uh, with a man truck all right we got to get into my favorite lanes all right yeah here we go here we go so we'll hit this at about 60 not 80 and there we go 60 miles an hour stay on the gas about 58 when we start climbing 10th gear 6 45 44 43 42 41 and yet we hit the top right up at about 40 miles per hour uh, 40 kilometers per hour I apologize so under a 19 and we can even say 20 ton load you know the one ton doesn't make that big a difference it performed really well now, one thing I like about the MAN 2 is it actually brakes better than Mercedes, DAF, and Iveco. Um, it probably even brakes a little bit better than the Renault. Um, but it's pretty close to on par with the Renault. A little bit of a straightaway. Oh, we got some income. Ooh, Marcel bringing in almost 11 grand. Nice. So, take a look at our running here. You can just see the long chassis there, the big square cabin and whatnot. And having that long chassis actually helps as well. Having that nice long chassis uh, helps with stability. Makes it a little bit harder to tip over when you're going around the corners. As you see here, I'm not even going to bother slowing down 80 kilometers, just no issues. We've already clipped a pretty significant time uh, off of our run. We're already down about 400 kilometers. I mean, you, you even look at the at the mascot symbol uh, for man, and it, it's a whoa. Hello, where did you come, <laughs> man? What is it with me and toll booths and getting and getting into or nearly getting into accidents, man? Whew! I'd be a little more careful around these toll booths. This is where things happen. Now, when the dashboard is actually on, um, when the dashboard is actually on high uh, graphics, which is what I play at normally, um, it's actually pretty easy to read. And you know, I don't have the best eyesight. I actually wear glasses to see far away or small things like this. And the dashboard is actually pretty easy to read. The display is a little small, the digital display, but it's not too bad. I really like to get over. I don't like riding on the outside lane unless I have to. I much prefer, there we go, being on this lane. All right, so we got a bit of an up, um, upgrade here. Not too bad, actually 10th gear and we're accelerating under a 19 ton load. So that's uh, really well there. I'm actually looking really forward to uh, $370 driver Jeff. Well, I can't be too mad because he's my newest driver. So he's got some time to go before he can uh, start bringing in some cash. And we see the fighter jets going overhead over there on the right. And there's one complaint I have about the truck sim map is that some things do get really, really repetitive. And like I was driving this one stretch of ocean and the one stretch of ocean continuously had the same two ships over and over and over and over and over. And I probably saw the same two ships for like half an hour driving. It would be a big container ship and then a big tanker ship, big container ship, big tanker ship. Now I understand where they're coming from. They're using the same blocks over and over again to make the road, but take the damn ships out. You know, if, if you can't make it more realistic, because there's no harbor in the world that you're going to see that many big container and tanker ships, um, you know, the, in that close proximity to each other, uh, in open ocean, heading to a harbor. And I should know, I lived n very near a very busy harbor in Norfolk, Virginia at one time. And not just a harbor uh, where commercial ships came in, but uh, naval ships as well, the Norfolk Naval Base, a uh, very large, very busy naval base. 
and uh, I didn't see that many ships come in and out. You know, so if you can't do it, then I'd rather just see open ocean. I understand the break up the monotony of the map, but please, no, I'd rather see open ocean than the same two ships over and over again in ridiculous proximity to each other. And even more ridiculous was another section where they had um, cruise ships. I think maybe the most you'll see in cruise ships offshore is like three or four. And I live in Hawaii now, and when it's really cruise ship season, that's kind of what we see at max, three or four cruise ships. Um, but 20, 30, oh, that's ridiculous. So here's this famous hill that we actually go over a lot. And I think we hit it in about the low uh, 70s, high 60s. And we're going to crest it at 37. So actually really, really good. Um, that's really good, all things considered. Um, again, that low towing capacity coming well into play. Uh, again, the, the Iveco doing the worst at 32. I actually think that maybe the... Uh, Oops, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to do that. I actually think the uh, Mercedes uh, came in better. Um, in the in, in the higher ends, I'd have to actually go back and look, but the man's still doing really well. And here's another uh, fairly strong climb, and we're not losing all that much speed. So, again, towing really, uh, really well for uh, our man truck here. But yeah, man, when it comes to the TSM map, sometimes it just seeing the same repetitive thing over and over can be really, really aggravating. Or it, it can break the immersion. And seeing that many ships or the same ships over and over again repeating offshore can break the immersion. There's uh, other areas, like with the fighter jets going overhead, there is this area that you can drive through where fighter jets will fly directly overhead of your truck. But they keep flying, they keep flying, they keep flying until you get by. And there's just, it's just too many of them. And there's another section where a helicopter flies straight down the road uh, at low level and flies right over your truck. And then like two or three minutes later, not even two or three minutes, so it's like one minute later, uh, another helicopter, which is actually the same one, will fly over your truck again. And it's things like that that to me just break the immersion in the game. I mean... The benefits of using um, truck sim mod actually greatly outweigh those detriments. And I'm looking forward to, to really getting going east on here. I actually hope to have going east before we get into our high-end trucks. But time will tell. Now we're getting some downhill action here and actually we're handling it pretty well. The man's got some good speed going on here, and we're going to need it for this upcoming climb, as you can see this long uh, upgrade here, incline, call it what you want. And again, I really enjoy the feedback that people give me, the positive feedback about the trucks and, you know, going over them and, you know, the content of my videos and whatnot. It, it's really helpful. So, with a nice good run, we actually conquered this uh, grade really, really well. And our loan installments in, not a big deal. It's not even 500 bucks. That's part of the Just Play mod. It makes my loan installments really small over a very extended period of time. All right, so before we enter into this um, tunnel here, I'm going to do the quick pause break um, to keep the audio synced. So, this will be really quick in just a second. Ta-da! And I'll probably do one more towards the end of the run, uh, just to help keep things in sync. Because, by the looks of it, by doing that, it actually keeps things uh, synced up fairly well. And I watched through the video with Renault and found that it actually wasn't all that disruptive with those little flickers. So. Although I should probably just stop calling attention to it and just do it rather than let you know it's coming. Ah, feels like I got something crawling on my neck. Yeesh. I'm 
again beautiful speed build up here and 126 127 kilometers and we're just gonna you know easily swing around this corner it's not too steep probably most of the trucks could have done it at that speed um, if not all of them but doing a great job and actually continuing to accelerate I'm not sure if we're on a slight um, downgrade or if this is flat but you see we're getting plenty of speed up here plenty of speed another income from driver Jeff 525 you know what I don't care how much my drivers make as long as they're making money you know what I'd love to see to come to truck simulator what I'd really love to see to come see come to Euro truck simulator or American truck simulator where you actually have to deal with your drivers your driver send you messages they want raises they're not happy with their truck uh, you know, they want a different truck or a specific type of truck. You know, and you're having to deal with these things, and you gotta, you got to weigh the options of keeping them versus firing them and replacing them and building up new drivers uh, with skills that will make the money that the drivers you just fired, you know, things like that. I'd love to see that come more to the management side of a truck sim than actually... Um, driving because I think they've got a, a good grip especially with the modding community they got a really good grip on the driving I'd like to see them add more trailers right now the only way to get heavy really heavy trailers special loads and I am hitting this corner heavy on purpose and as you can see the man is just you know it just handled it beautifully as it dropped speed it, it just came around that corner at speeds that the DAF and probably even the Mercedes would have been like what the hell are you doing but yeah I'd like to see that too more trailers I don't care about company names and all that it's really cool to have but more trailers better trailers special jobs where you have to, where you have to follow escort trucks through very specific paths hauling uh, you know big large loads and whatnot I'd really like to see that I'd like to see them get more in depth with the game rather than just make an Americanized version of Euro trucks and simulator and, and when like Euro Truck 3 eventually comes out um, expand on that because this has the potential to be a very very deep and involving uh, game you know where you can manage a company more manage your trucks more uh, deal with special loads and eventually someday I think there's a real possibility for a truck driving MMO I figure why not instead of all these trucks I see driving on the road in different directions being AI trucks uh, let a lot of them be other players that drive you know I'm passing by other players and instead of just people saying you know here's this load for this much uh, I can also bid on loads you have um, you know you can take loads where people say this is how much we would pay for this load to go or you can bid on loads with other drivers to try and especially take special loads um, you know big loads like windmill parts or cranes or or you know big crazy stuff like that I think that would be really cool and lucrative to be honest make a big truck MMO those are like a rumor flowing around with like the guys that make world of tanks they got world of planes I think even got world of ships and there's the, the whole truck of them doing thing about like doing world of trucks oh god I hope not I don't care how popular the games are those games are blatant pay to win games and I hate that I hate games where yeah sure you can grind out the stuff that you want but it's going to take you nine years to do it and in that nine years you're gonna be getting your butt handed to you by everyone else that has money to spend I'm not a rich person I get you know paid once a month through disability and you know I may do my YouTube for fun it's not a uh, a serious endeavor yet I'm not saying it can't become one I, I've always talked about it. it'd be great if that honestly happened but I do this for fun as much as anything else so you know I don't have all that extra money to spend on a game like World of Tanks or God forbid they do a world of trucks. Oof, oof. No. I don't mind microtransactions in a game, but I believe there are games out there that do it right. And there are games where your microtransactions 
are strictly cosmetic. Strictly cosmetic. You know, when you pay into a game, you know, you get everything. And then everything that you can buy can be strictly cosmetic. Um, because there are plenty of people out there in the world who are willing to um, pay to look good in a video game. And I'm one of them. You know, uh, League of Legends, I buy skins all the time. Even for champions, I don't use very often. You know, the champions I might only use in an ARAM. Things like that, so... You know, that's just the way I feel it. That's just the way I feel about it. There's nothing more to it than that. So, we're already pretty close to the end of this load here. We get this nice, long, straightaway, uh, whether it be a slide up or flat. I'm pretty sure it's slide up. We're actually holding nice and steady at 100 kilometers an hour. And this truck has just been driving like an absolute dream. Very smooth, uh, very steady, very powerful, good haul. Uh, there, you know, there's just definitely nothing wrong with it. It's, it's a great, burly truck uh, that... I really have I really have absolutely no complaints against whatsoever. None. Zero. This is the first truck where I can look at it and just not nitpick anything out of it. You know? You know, it's got upgradable chassis, upgradable engines, upgradable transmissions. It's extremely stable, it's very strong. Beautiful view out its windshield, beautiful view out its side windows, beautiful mirror views. The dashboard is very clear and easy to read. It's just, it's, there's, there's nothing wrong with it. Nothing. Zero. Which, in all things considered, should not come as a surprise because we are quite literally in our top three trucks. You know? In terms of... Um, Started trucks, we're in our top three. We've only got the man and two more to go, Scania and Volvo. Um, and I consider the man the third best, and that's nothing shabby. You know, it's... I don't know how, how else to describe it. You know, there, there's nothing wrong with taking a bronze. And, again, this is only personal opinion. I know that there are plenty of people out there who are man fans, and this... I can understand why. I can truly understand why. So, we get to our toll bridge here. And yes, I will eventually upgrade these trucks, my beginner trucks, to high-end trucks. But for the sake of the video, what I'm going to end up doing is buying the high-end trucks straight from the dealer. And that will be, um, you know, the one we all, you know, that'll be the one we judge on. So, you know, there is no extra accidental uh, modding into the game from... Uh, like my just play mod or I do have other mods in this game uh, for this game you know for the different trucks that I want to use and you know those won't be in there either So again, I'm kind of purposely hitting this corner a little hard, and we're getting a little bounce, but again, it's just handling it beautifully, and plenty of stopping power uh, for the man truck. Uh, 
Bad corner. Bad corner. I don't know why sometimes I have trouble doing that. I don't do it when I'm driving normally, when I'm not recording. When I record, I do very terrible, stupid things. And I think part of that's because I'm kind of rushing it. I don't know. I think for the s uh, no, 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 don't hit these too fast. Because we don't want to go... Like I said, I literally did that once and pretty much almost ended up airborne. So, for the sake of this, I'm going to go straight. Just recover this little bit of extra road and hopefully get that question mark down uh, at the end there. Which is probably another uh, recruitment agency by the looks of it. That's what I'm hoping anyways. Yeah, I can see from here it's... Oh no, it's a small dealership. It's a small dealership. I think. I don't know if I'm actually going to get it though because of where it is. Oh well, this sucks. We'll pop out real quick. Take another look. Through the building. Why not? You see that nice wide low stance that it has. You know, the cab's pretty low to the ground. Nice wide cabin too, not too tall. It's got a nice width to it. The chassis's got a nice length as our pole gets in the way there. So all of those combine in to make a, a pretty stable um, truck. Sometimes if you honk, it helps to get them to move. Oh. Oh, whatever. So it's an Aveco dealership. Unfortunately, I won't be picking it up because I won't be driving past it. I can do that after. I'm not gonna worry. I don't need it, but you know, it's a, a whole completionist thing. Must do it. Must do it. Of course, I could have gone straight and come around the other way as well. I didn't think of that. Here we are. Now let's see how well I can back this thing in. We're going to have an off-center turn. I mean, not, not turn, but off-center parking uh, area, which is fine. So we're, we're going to be like in the fence. Some, I'm thinking. I actually turned a little too far there, but I think I can rescue it. I think we're going to get this one pretty good. Can we get it on the first shot? I could still easily mess this up. Just to be honest with you. But I think I'm going to get it on the first try. Yeah, there we go. Alright, that was actually a pretty quick run considering. And we did excellent with no damage. Uh, not level 18 yet, but we're... <laughs> We're getting there, and hopefully the new Scania chassis will be uh, really, really nice. All right. So, what else can I say? The man truck, I think I've said it all, but I'll repeat it one more time. It's got a nice, low-end uh, Newton meters uh, engine torque, even though it's only uh, 320 horsepower. It's a burly truck with a low um, 
low center of gravity, nice wide stance, long chassis, hauls plenty of fuel, uh, great visibility out of its windshield, side mirrors, um, and uh, side windows. Uh, the front mirror is set off to the side out of the way so that it's not obstructing your view in the front, so there's no distractions in the windshield whatsoever. Uh, it's got plenty of upgradeability on it. It's really, really, really good truck. That's all there is to it. it it's very impressive. You definitely cannot go wrong driving a man truck. It looks pretty good, too. You take a look at it right there. It looks like a man truck. And it's got that nice dog mascot that, like, draws parallels to the Mac Bulldog, you know. And I kind of wonder if that's what they were going for. Um, but either way, there you go. Beautiful truck. Um, and like I said, there's nothing. There's not a single thing that I can point wrong to it. None whatsoever. If a truck that stable, uh, only being a 2x4 with that much great pull and all that great vision and everything else I said, there, there's no faults. None. I don't hold it in as high standards as a couple other trucks. But, again, considering that there's three trucks under it and two trucks over it, it's still a really good... Th I think it's three trucks. DAF, Mercedes, Renault... Iveco, Daff, Mercedes, Renault. But yeah, there's four trucks under it and only two trucks over it. And, you know, you can kind of dribble the Renault if you want to. You can even, like, say the Renault, like, ties the man. But I really don't feel that's true because, again, the Renault lacks the ability to upgrade its chassis to a multi-wheel for that extra stability for really heavy loads. Uh, which, by the way... Of course, upgrading your chassis also gives you extra braking. Um, in some cases, it can you know really help with your pull, giving you better traction and whatnot. So the Renault not being able to do that is what puts it really under the man rather than actually being a tie. That's just the way I see it. So that's going to be it for this one, folks. I hope you enjoyed watching this video as much as I've enjoyed bringing it to you. Please don't forget to rate, comment, and subscribe if you would be so great. Uh, until next time, this is One Big Bugger signing out. we got two more beginner trucks to go before we get into our... Actually, we got to do the Renault Magnum and the Aveco Highway before we get into our high-end trucks. But we still only got two more starter trucks to go. So until then, folks, one big bugger signing out, and I'll see you next time.